Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey joined with my son Jordan Spivey and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In our last video, Organelles Assemble Part 1, we broke down how cell organelles work together as a system to build proteins and store, clean up, and support to help the cell maintain homeostasis. In Part 2 of Organelles Assemble, we will cover organelles that capture and release energy and organelles that help maintain cellular boundaries to help the cell maintain homeostasis. So let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can explain how cell organelles work together as a system to help the cell maintain homeostasis. So let's do a quick recap. In Organelles Assemble Part 1, we cover how the nucleus, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, vesicles, and the Golgi apparatus work together as a team to build, modify, and ship proteins to places in and out of the cell. We also cover how vacuoles, vesicles, lysosomes, cytoskeleton, and centrioles work together to store materials, clean up, and support the cell. Without these organelles working together, the cell would eventually break down and die. Just like the Avengers, it takes groups of organelles working together to protect and keep our cells alive. Now let's move on to organelles organelles that capture and release energy and organelles that help maintain cellular boundaries. There are two organelles that capture and release energy, which are chloroplasts and mitochondria. It's important to know that chloroplasts are only found in plant and eukaryotic algae cells that go through the process of photosynthesis. We will focus on plant cells in this video. Mitochondria can be found in both plant and animal cells. So how do chloroplasts work to capture energy in plant cells, you may be asking? That's a great question. To keep it simple, chloroplasts in plants take in light energy, water, and carbon dioxide to produce sugars and oxygen. The plant uses the sugars as energy to power cellular processes to keep it alive. The oxygen that is released from the plant is a byproduct and is used by our mitochondria to produce energy to keep us alive. Like I stated earlier, mitochondria can be found in both plant and animal cells. Mitochondria take oxygen and glucose from the foods we eat and produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. We breathe out the carbon dioxide and water as waste or byproducts. Our mitochondria uses the glucose from the food we eat to produce ATP, which are the energy storage molecules for our cells. ATP, known as adenosine triphosphate, is made up of adenine, ribose, and three phosphate groups. It can be thought of as a fully charged battery for energy use by our cells. When cells need energy, the chemical bond is broken between the second and third phosphate group of ATP, which now turns it into ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. ADP is like a low or depleted battery. Our cells turn ADP back into ATP by using the energy from the foods we eat. The energy from food adds a third phosphate onto adenosine diphosphate, which turns it right back into the fully charged battery adenosine triphosphate, simply known as ATP. If you haven't noticed already, chloroplasts and mitochondria need each other. Chloroplasts need carbon dioxide and water, which comes from cellular respiration with the help of the mitochondria, and the mitochondria needs oxygen from the chloroplasts. A perfectly mutualistic relationship where both parties depend on and help each other survive. So think about what would happen if chloroplasts and mitochondria malfunctioned or stopped working. Basically, plant and animal cells would die as a result of running out of energy to power the cell. And if our cells run out of energy, then you get the picture. Now let's talk about the organelles that help maintain cellular boundaries, which are the cell wall and cell membrane. Plant and prokaryotic cells like bacteria have cell walls. Many organisms have cell walls in addition to cell membranes. Animal cells do not have a cell wall, they only have a cell membrane. The main function of the cell wall is to support, shape, and protect the cell. It is like the roof and bricks of the cell, which protects the inside of the cell from the environment on the outside. Cell walls are located outside of the cell membrane. Cell walls contain small openings that allow water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other important substances to pass through in and out of the cell. Cell walls give plants and trees the structural support they need to stand against the force of gravity. Basically, plants and trees would fall straight to the ground without the support of the cell wall. Now let's talk about cell membranes. It's important to know that all cells contain cell membranes, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells alike. Cell membranes are made up of a double layer called the lipid bilayer. The lipid bilayer is flexible and provides a strong barrier between the inside and outside of the cell. The lipid bilayer is made up of hydrophilic heads that love water and hydrophobic tails that hate water. The hydrophilic heads are on the outside while the hydrophobic tails are on the inside of the phospholipid bilayer. 
The phospholipid bilayer also contains proteins embedded throughout it that aid in getting materials in and out of the cell through active and passive transport. There are carbohydrates attached to these proteins whose function is to help cells identify each other. The cell membrane is well known for being semi or selectively permeable. This means that some substances can pass across it while others cannot. This always reminds me of a bouncer at a club or security guard. It allows some things to come in and others shall not pass. In summary, working alone, our organelles are weak, but working together as a united team, they are a mighty force to be reckoned with. We could all learn a thing or two from organelles. They are so tiny, but work together to achieve a common goal of keeping us alive. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knobs to see how proficient you are with explaining the importance of organelles that capture and release energy and organelles that help maintain cellular boundaries. Use your electron device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results in your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Make sure to click that icon bell so you'll be notified of our newest science tutorial videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Peace and have a positive, productive day. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash.